Hello everyone, it's Christine here and happy Thrifty Thursday. So I, on my desk in front of me, have a bag of goodies that I picked up a few weeks ago from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles who sells her goodies on Instagram. Um, she has a, an amazing collection of vintage fabrics and haberdashery and each day she lists some items. Um, very good prices, um, just a really great way to build up your stash and get smaller pieces of, of fabric and other fascinating um, vintage haberdashery items. I'm lucky that she lives not too far away from me here in Victoria, Australia, but she does also post, um, I know she certainly posts within Australia and if you were from overseas, I mean obviously postage starts to get expensive, but you could always contact her and, and ask her. So she is purveyor of Reclaim Textiles on Instagram. So um, I haven't looked through it. I've just basically taken it out of the bag and popped it on the desk and we could have a look together. So she is a great source for Appleton's wools and other um, wools. So those are Appleton. I think there's these ones are Gumnut. Yep, Gumnut yarns. I'm learning the labels. And I did want some more green. So I think they will be, they will be great to have. I might even take a few of these with me to my upcoming workshop. Although I think we get all the supplies that we need, but um, those could be could be useful. Look at that nice variegated one. That one is oh, that's a Carlund yarns. So lots of beautiful ones. They were some of the lovely um, yarns that I got recently as well in the pack beautiful beautiful all sorts of threads this one's really lovely it's a wool but it's just super super soft so yeah those will be great to great to use yep gumnut yarns and appleton so I'll pop that over here some of these might have been grouped together but again um, I think this might be actually a is it a linen yarn it feels different to my other ones and i don't think i have that many linens i'm trying to read what it says on it something apollo coronet edelfrau yeah it doesn't tell us but it does feel like it could be a um a linen thread but it's a beautiful beautiful gold so actually i'll put that in my drawer over straight away with my other threads this one's a lovely um burgundy which could be great for my burgundy bonheur and uh black which i actually don't have that many of those crochet threads so let me just add those to my little drawers next to me straight away do some putting away and it looks like I got myself some lovely um, name labels that it looks like they've actually been removed from a piece of piece of clothing. I think all the one person, E.S. Grantham. That sounds like out of um, Downton Abbey. I don't know if one of them was a Grantham, um, but that's that's a fabulous little bit of history that can go with my little French laundry labels, which are fun to add into slow stitch pieces. Then a beautiful, is it a, oh yeah, it's a, it would be a cloth that sort of runs along a sort of cabinet or dresser. I think in the US you call them dresser scarves, don't you? That's not generally a term that we use, but I've heard quite a few folks, Martha and um, also Linny, Linny P, Linda from Linny P has referred to dresser scarves. But these are very sweet little um, snowdrops, just lovely. And doesn't look like it's stained or anything either and it's such a lovely fine um, cotton linen it's beautiful and it looks like it's been hand stitched just very delicately much more delicately than i can do if you can just see the incredible um, satin stitches but it's been yeah beautifully maintained possibly never used so that one will be hard to cut into, but possibly I could work something in the in the center of it, maybe. And then I think I would have selected this because it has birds on it, and you know me and birds and trees and flowers. Um, almost got an Asiatic sort of feel to it. But a lovely deep blue background, and yeah, just really lovely design details. 
yeah they'll be beautiful to to incorporate might even need to actually put that aside with my um, current color inspirations piece where I'm making a slow stitch container and I haven't yet um, finished laying out the the fabrics for one part of it so and birds are a theme in that um, I saw this beautiful little I think they're called cathedral window um, pieces and it's just a pin cushion it's got a little bit of staining on that side so I'll pop it through through the wash I think it can go through the wash I'll obviously take the pins out um, but otherwise I don't even mind if it's got a bit, bit of a patina and I can just have that hanging up near my desk and then as I say she has lots of lovely just like scraps of fabric often she'll kind of group a various remnants together these were probably grouped um, grouped together but again just that's often all you need you only need a little bit of, of fabric for slow stitch let's see what else I don't know if some of these might have been Liberty as well but that's beautiful these ones I think would have been fabric um, fabric samples some more lovely fabric samples as well starting to get very windy outside it's been a very hot day and we've been on fire fire alert here in Victoria particularly in the Wimmera region um, so I'm just hoping that nothing as of when I was um, yeah, listening to news earlier today, nothing bad had happened at that point, but hopefully nothing else comes. Sometimes when there's the lightning that can start fires as well. This reminds me of Moroccan tiles. I think it would have been maybe a little um, tablecloth or something because it's got an edging all the way around. But yeah, that would be lovely. Lovely to use, even just using sections of it. It's a beautiful, um, quite sturdy, um, almost like a, a canvas in some ways, a cotton cotton canvas. So that would be good for making pouches as well. Then some of these little ones. Now some, I wonder, would they have sat around like a, or would have they sat at the bottom of a, a like a wine glass as a little coaster that you sit then the bottom in, or would have it been a little candle? candle rest they are fascinating I think I remember thinking that at the time wondering what they what they were for but I'm actually thinking they could make really sweet little they're almost like a ready-made little little pocket for something what a lovely idea I'm gonna have a ponder on those I'm actually going to pop those over over here and have a ponder um, a little tray cloth with sweet little cherries on it. So again, I think I bought this thinking I could just use yeah, individual sections of them and add them to my stitching. But yeah, lovely, lovely little embroidery into the into the fabric. And some fabric with believe and writing written on it. Um, I quite like script type fabrics. And having the nice little believe that's a good thing again I might keep that oh, no, it doesn't really go with the color scheme of the th piece I was thinking about this one's almost it's got a slight sort of greeny tone to it not that I really needed more more laces but sometimes I can't resist one that I don't have and it's a beautiful cotton cotton crochet style lace she often um, has yeah, tablecloths and other things she's cut up so you can get just a portion of it. This is a beautiful, beautiful um, silk, I think it is, by the feel of it. And just lovely, lovely stitching on it. Again, I'll be able to kind of fussy cut out um, items of it and incorporate it into my, my pieces. And even the edging is just really lovely. So I'll get quite a bit of quite a bit of use out of that I think oh sorry just bumped the camera it's getting decidedly warm in the room here I might just quickly pop on my air conditioner and hopefully it won't make it too noisy for you um, so that's another piece of the Appleton's wool and here is oh yeah I remember I'm um, seeing this one it's got a, a person a, a figure on it 
so funny when I buy these, they, she sort of saves them for a good number of months for me and then when I pick them up, it, I've often forgotten what I, um, yeah, what I actually saw in them. And then there's cherubs, if you can see them up around the sides with their lovely chubby, chubby, chubby thighs. Now the wind's blowing really loud, so yeah, it's not even the air conditioner that you can probably hear, it's the wind howling outside. A beautiful, beautiful floral. Again, lovely for thread painting into. Been doing lots of other things I haven't actually done um, for a while there. I felt like I was thread painting all the time when I was doing my stitchery swap squares, but I've been doing lots of other fun activities lately. Can never resist fabric with owls on it. And I quite liked that this one had a sort of a Japanesey feel to it. And again, it's like um, patchwork, but all as a single piece. And then you can just add your own sort of stitching to it. So I think that will be a lot of fun to use. This one, I think, might have been a Liberty. It's beautiful. So vibrant, so lovely. Enjoy that one. Gardening inspired, always useful. And again, I thought these would be great because I can fussy cut out elements of them and add them to my, my stitcheries as well. It's got seed packets and I've been doing my little seed packet um, embroidery. I did the, the pansy one. I think I've got to actually um, finish assembling that into a, into a seed packet. I love um, these. This would have been, I think, a fabric sample, furnishing fam sample, but they're just, yeah, beautiful woven woven pieces and you can just cut them out and use them almost like um, ribbons, decorative ribbons and things like that or you can take a, take a section of them. So this is very useful. This looks like it might be from a Australian design Muslim cotton made in India so it looks like it's probably a scarf. As I say she has all sorts of, oh yep, a uh, um, a scarf that way but I think yeah when I saw it I thought oh yeah that'll be nice to nice to thread paint in and because it's a sort of a thinner fabric you'll be able to get some nice sort of textural textural elements by stitching into it possibly if you put it on a thicker thicker fabric again that could become a wearable piece couldn't it for the current Roxy Roxy prompt so I could stitch into it this one's quite retro some of them I just don't even remember um, actually buying. I sometimes wonder if Mel throws it, throws extras into the into the bag. Feels like this has got a bit of bit of. Oh, maybe not stretch. Maybe it's like a flannel or something. Um, so yeah, that's nice and colourful. What's this one? Ah, uh, it's a mat that hasn't been stitched into, so it's um, got its design on it. So that could be a fun one to stitch into. Something that I learned about these is um, you're best not to wash them because sometimes the designs come out when you when you wash them. So wash them after you've done your stitching. So I might even take that on holidays with me in case I just need some mindless mindless stitching. I always take more than I need and then kind of don't get to do those things. I'm sure I'll be having lots of ideas wearing after the Fleur workshop. So this is a big piece of furnishing fabric sample. And again, beautiful. I don't know. This could be a Sanderson. She sometimes has Sandersons. Copyright and no, Andrew Woodridge. And it's protected with Dupont Teflon. So yeah, that'll be lovely, lovely, lovely to do thread painting into that. Very generous size. that out to take a take a section of it. I love my fruity sort of designs. I don't know whether this would have originally been from a piece of clothing of some sort or probably just a piece of furnishing. Isn't that lovely? Again you could have beautiful yeah lots of fun doing thread painting of the, the fruits. Again a good colour scheme for my burgundy bonheur which I will get back to at some point. Another one of those lovely woven 
fabrics. Isn't that just delicious? So, so lovely. I really like that. This reminds me of a Lucello fabric. Ah, uh, yep. I'm pretty sure antique flower collection. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of a one of the Lucello. I think I've had a small section of this in one of my packs from Lucello in Melbourne. Another furnishing fabric, Ashbourne, printed in England, 100% cotton. Um, I was thinking some of this would be lovely and that I could do my own painting with my intents within it, or thread painting indeed. It's almost like an outline, almost like a, inviting you to colour it in. I haven't actually been looking at Mel's site recently because I find if I don't look, then I won't won't purchase. But otherwise, I see things and um, yeah. This is Mandarin Dynasty by Hoffman, California. So yeah, beautiful. I don't know if you can see. It's got like a gold embossing on it. Really lovely. Beautiful colours. Beautiful design. Again, got that Asian Asian feel to it. This reminds me of another Lucello fabric and again beautiful lovely small smaller print um, floral bouquets that would be fabulous to thread paint and then sections that you can just integrate into your slow stitch pieces lovely border type prints on a beautiful soft cotton Again, you can cut out section, sections of that. Ooh, horsey. Now this one will be going on my burgundy bonheur piece. It's got a little bit of staining, so we'll see if that comes out, but I'm not fussed anyway, because I wanted to have something for my family that lives in Western Australia that are mad keen horse people now. So they've got lots of, lots of horses and the kids love riding. So I'll be putting that onto that that piece. I might just go over the flowers and make them sort of a bit more burgundy and then I might, I'll probably, I think I'll leave the outline of the horse as it is and I like that the horseshoe is up the, the correct direction and it's just a beautiful heart shape. So that one definitely for my burgundy bonheur. I'll actually keep that out and put that over with it. This one I like again because it's like a little miniature patchwork of stars. Something treasures is what that one is. So that will be very handy. I've got a whole drawer of patchwork style fabrics. This one I couldn't resist. It is W.M. Saunders 1989. So 1990. Wow, it doesn't seem that long ago 1989, but it is indeed. And I think it will be just a little embroidery. Yeah, it's just on a on a cloth in there. Um, but isn't that sweet? Just a little little scene, so I had to had to save that one. And then some beautiful like newspaper print again. It's got believe. I wonder if that went with that other one that had believe on it. It's got lots of different scripts, so it will be very useful. And there's quite a decent decent quantity of that one. Be great. It doesn't have the name of the fabric, so I can't tell you what that one was. Oops, here's another one of those lovely little laundry labels. And this one I'm certain is a Liberty print. It's that beautiful Liberty fabric feel to it. And it's got birds and flowers, so very, very happy. With that, this Liberty can be very expensive indeed. Ooh, can you hear the rattling? Normally my windows don't rattle, but it is, um, that is quite, quite a rattle. Then, isn't this great? It's got the measuring tape on the side and then it's got the thimbles and the scissors. Does it have a name for us of what it is? I don't think so. But that's that's fabulous. I love that. I didn't know it had the measuring tape actually on the side. I don't think I noticed that at the time when I 
purchase that. Something little, something probably quilt, quill. And that'll be great for making little um, English paper piece, Epiflex template pieces. Lovely small design. We've got a rose by Three Sisters for Moda. I love some of the Three Sisters fabric. So it's a decent sized piece. Pink on a beautiful sort of green, lovely garden themed. And a nice little retro design again. I like that it's nice and fine and small. Again, good for little English paper piecing pieces. Got a check. Again, I don't even quite, maybe it was with um, some other, other fabrics, I don't quite remember specifically buying this but it will most definitely be useful oh i whenever she has um yeah really vintage laces i can't can't really resist um oh it's tied together here what's happened here these i will just eventually hand hand wash probably but i don't even mind the sort of the age patina but they are just just the detailing, sorry, even just on one of these little little sections is amazing. There's a lovely quantity of it. Isn't that beautiful? Let's have a look at this one. This one is, I don't know how I'm going to go with it. I don't tend to do um countered cross stitch it says it's advanced but i just couldn't resist the design it's like a sampler and i thought if i do it i can put it on my um burgundy bonheur piece because i've already incorporated a fabric that has a sampler printed on it peeking out through um the lace of the piece but i thought this this could be good so yeah it's got all the and when she listed it, I looked it up online and if you were buying it new, it would, would have been like 10 times the price. I think it was, yeah, it was really, really cheap. Um, and I thought even if I only end up doing sort of individual letters and using this for it, um, I think it will still actually be quite, quite useful. It'll be quite a large size actually once it's, once it's done. So who knows, that will be a little, keep that project and... Maybe it's something I take on a on a future future holiday to just have a little a little go at. Or if I have room, maybe I'll pop it in for this one, and it might just be something I just start to start to tinker with. But I can't get it back into the, the bag now that I've got it out. It's like the bag has just unfolded itself. Oops, here's another one of the little laundry labels. So we'll put those over there. And a really very out there um, trim, but I just love the colourful, colourful woven, woven trims. Bit of fun, very retro colours again. So I'll put those up with my trim collection, which I have wrapped around cards for easy, easy locating. Again, a very almost reminds me sort of of. 60s colours, purples and blues and greens. Lovely, beautiful weight of cotton. This one's a bit of fun. It's all different stamps. Edom, Oem, Edom, Oem. Past the time of day 1970, January. I don't think it's got a name of the fabric on it, but I thought, yeah, they'll be just kit to add to little slow stitch projects or postcards or um, other other things. A pink, pale pink and white. Again, almost reminds me of tiles. This one is printed for shabby fabrics rose garden tea and yeah I thought that was very cute with teapots plates a little sort of yeah tea scene it's very sweet indeed and again being able to stitch into those those flowers etc a 
Paris fabric again I struggle to resist like birds and flowers struggle to resist Paris or Italy fabrics that's lovely this one is Robert Kaufman Parisian rose chandelier keep going through the fabrics and we'll get down to the exciting threads and other things that are hiding out down there another sample fabric but this is really interesting oh look at that the birds that would have been what got me that would have got me the flowers and the birds and I would have just been um, unable to resist but can you see how it's got just like a beautiful gleam on the surface but I think it's going to be okay to stitch into let's just try pin yep Isn't that lovely? And it does, it really does feel nice. Does that have a name on it? No, it's just got the, the colour selection on it. Really lovely. Just, just adore it. And just love the surface. The butterfly over there, isn't that lovely? All this kind of gives you ideas of how you'd be able to combine fabrics as well to create some of, some of the shapes and designs. Ooh. Oh, this is a silk. Looks like someone's painted on the silk and then just done some little sketchy, sketchy embroidery. Isn't that sweet? Just have to incorporate that into something to save that for posterity. A little doily probably came with some other laces and things. Not even sure what we have in here. We have a little tin. This probably was just a little selection of random um, beads that came maybe with that little tin. I suppose I can use that. I don't think it's a magnetic one, is it? No, nope, not magnetic. I'll just use it on my desk to put little random bits and pieces into. But a selection of beautiful beads, sequins, lovely multicolored beads, blues. Tiny little orange ones, yellows, reds, golds, browns, and white ones. Fifteen cents. <laughs> As I say, she doesn't charge a lot of a lot for things, and I think she sort of yeah picks them up through her embroiderers guild of Victoria colleagues, and I think she sells things on behalf of the guild as well. Beautiful, good little selection of beads those over there and then yeah when I see vintage haberdashery I want to do a book a slow stitch book that has little places for these I've got some of these snaps already and some of these newies ones but this I was interested in Phil pour France Français the Jean Phil machine 50% cotton yeah, French. Yep, France. Fils Lister. I just, I, I love, 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 love the packaging. So yeah, that's beautiful. And isn't this great? Glister nylon hose mending pack made in England. So back when you would actually mend your hosiery, your stockings. British, British snap. A buckle. Ooh, it's got a nice um, print on it. That could be quite good to use on pouches and things. You could make your little fabric thing to um, weave, weave through that. I love my little um, wooden rolls. This has got a beautiful grey silver. Even though some people say the vintage threads aren't very good to use, um, I haven't had problems with them. Most of my threads are vintage and they, they don't break too often. And then a nice little selection, oops, of buttons. I'll never say no to buttons. But I would have got that mainly for those um, those threads that I don't have in my in my vintage collection. So I'll keep those to put with my other vintage goodies. I might keep the buckle out to use. A little feed there. Now, what do we have in here? We have some more beads. Some red beads, blues, 
free sample from Cranberry Knit. Some other lovely multicolored ones, some Mill Hill frosted glass beads, and some lovely. I think one of these is leaking, so I might need to actually because I think something fell out then or down here. So I might just put these ones back in here in case something is indeed is indeed leaking. I'll put it with my my vintage goodies. And some more gorgeous trim. Beautiful burgundy. So this one I think could definitely go in my burgundy bonheur piece. Look how glintzy it is on the back, but quite understated on the front. So that would be great. Put it over with my trims. And then I think, is that the same as the one I had before? I think it might be. So that would be good. And then another lovely one. I don't know if they're meant to be little little faces. Oh no, I think maybe they're meant to be like little angels. I'm not sure. They've got little tufts on their head, but they look like they've got wings. Who knows? And another lovely trim. I really do struggle to resist interesting trims. Because they're fun to add to your, your projects. This one's like a, a trim within a trim. Beautiful and textural. That's a very good quantity of that. Okay, let's leave aside these. I get very excited about the thread, so I'll leave those aside. And let's just finish looking at the, the fabrics. Beautiful burgundy sort of colours and greens. Great. I reckon that's a Lucello one as well. Oh no, it's a Moda. Wild Rose, so I think I've actually ended up with some of that in something. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, the burgundy. So I think I would have been purchasing for my burgundy on Bonheur project at that time. On oh, here's some more of the border. I think that might be similar to the border one that I looked at before. So that'll be very handy to have. It's really lovely, lovely pattern. Okay, onto the threads. Now these ones remind me of the um, threads I got in the packs. Um, let me see, I've got some of them here. I don't know, these aren't them. I have the other ones that I know they're in rolls, so I won't get them unrolled. But they were the Brazilian embroidery threads, and these look very similar. Let's have a. Oh, yep, it is Edmar. That was the exact brand of the um, yep, Lola Rayon. Yep. So I've got some more beautiful um, embroidery threads. I sent some to Kathy, my friend, but she said she'd love to, love to have some. So I sent her a pack of them. Yeah, they're, they're gorgeous. I might even take those with me just because they're a little ready-made um, mixed pack. Um, and who knows, I might get a chance to have a play with them. Now, these ones, when I saw them on Mel's site, reminded me of Mrs. Cheatham's threads that the lovely Annie Coxton, Artie Farty Annie, got and was recently um, sorting through and has finished sorting through all her big sort of pile of threads. But they look very vintage and I thought they would be great to add to my sort of vintage haberdashery. Let's just try and get them. Let's just have a look. Oops, they're sticking to the... I just love the labels, just like Annie. I will not be um, doing away with the labels. So made in Great Britain, will wash with ordinary soaps and boiling water, but soda or washing powders must not be used. Shade number 233A. So registered trademark. Mellard Floss Piercels. So Annie, you'll have to tell me if these were some of the same... Um, wouldn't it be amazing if... Yeah, we had um, the same threads on different sides of the world in our vintage thread collections. Again, another Millard's thread. But yeah, they definitely look old. Maybe not as old as Mrs. Cheatham's, who knows? Or Ms. Cheatham. Another made in Great Big Britain. Mellard Floss Piercels. This one's a Ricard's Embroidery. That's 
another Pearsall's Millard. Looking for some other labels. That's a Semco, so that's a current brand, but very old label, floss embroidery. Same warning on it about not washing with, with soda. Millard. Here's another, oh, different brand, Vickers. Shade, Salome. I've got a colleague at work with that name, Salome. Brilliante, made in England. Lovely. It's got the fleur de lis on it. Another. So lots of them are these Pearsals ones or Pearsals. What's this one? Oh, this is one of a full label of the Ricards Sylvan registered. Wash in lukewarm water and plenty of soap. Rinse in a clean warm water and Press between cloths by hand or mangle well, back when you'd use the mangle to dry. Do not wring. Very strict instructions. It's another Pearsall's one. What have we got down here? Different, different label. We've got, I oh know, Pearsall's and, and Logs. Philo Floss. Eastern Unfading Dyes. Wow. I wonder if that was like a turmeric or something they used. Use pure curd soap and warm water. Rub lightly. Rinse well. Do not wring or iron whilst wet. Dry quickly. Avoid soda and strong soaps made in Great Britain. They fitted a lot on their little labels, didn't they? Oh, here's another, a different name. We've got a Lister's Tenax Floss with a beautiful lion on it. We'll wash with ordinary... Soap and boiling water, sodas and washing powders must not be used. Another Pearsall's one. This is the Pearsall's and Loss label. Maybe they changed their company name. Oh, Royal Floss. This one's a different brand. Carlson Courier and Courier Co. Fast Colour. Royal Floss manufactured by Belding Brothers of Co. of Cal and Co. of California. So they've definitely travelled from various places, these threads, made their way to Australia. This one looks like it's wrapped itself, but I'm fascinated to see if there's anything on this piece of paper. No, it looks like it's just a, a folded, stapled piece of paper. Wouldn't it be lovely to find someone who'd actually, yeah, written something. Pearsall's Mandarin Trademark Stranded Silk. And then there's this one that doesn't have a label and it's sort of gone fluffy. It's a thicker, thicker one. But what a lovely, what a lovely collection of treasures of silks there. Now I won't get them into a total, total mess because otherwise I'll be like Annie. I'm having to unsort them for forever. So yeah, that's definitely going to be a project. So I'll be watching um, easily. I think Annie's using hers for her. Um, she's going to follow along with the stitch along I did a while ago at her own pace. And then these are metallic threads, which I really haven't, uh, like um, actual metal threads. Three dollars, I don't know if that's what I paid for it. And I wasn't sure what state they'd been in, be in because I know that often real metallics can actually um, tarnish over time. So that looks like a copper, that looks like it's just a little um, tassel, so I'm going to take that out. This one, yeah, it's definitely like pure metallic. It's like actual very thin, almost wire. So that's going to be fascinating um, to play with. I probably shouldn't be finger it, handling it too much. And then that's like a copper. And then that's like a wire, which could be actually great because I was contemplating doing some pieces coming off my slow stitch container with like butterflies or birds and I'd need a wire for that. So yeah, that's some great things to play with. I love this textural sort of, almost reminds me of um, steel wool pads that you use in the in the sink. Look, someone's sort of wound, wound that one around. Fascinating, fascinating, and this little bit of red. So that will be fun to play with for sure. 
put that with my my threads. Let's put that up there with my threads, and that is that's that. So hopefully you enjoyed having a look at what I got in my stash of goodies from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles, and um, I'll see you very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.